This is Rahul Morgan here is a Group Chief Executive Officer at Treasury Consulting and also our Venture Capitalist. Now standing today we are going to be shooting a pretty important video about one of my favorite bands that's Goldman. You know Goldman Sachs. Well people know that I am always a pro Goldman. I would always be pro Goldman. That's for sure. But that's a different thing that in the last uh, six months Goldman lost uh, their IPO in uh, Saudi Aramco and they lost their place in Airtel as well and more importantly the BNP Paribas, the Deutsche Bank who is selling the basically their flow trading you know they have lost that as well although we could have separate video in that regards it looks like Goldman is getting a little complacent or maybe their uh, goals are changing under the current CEO David, David Solomon but we do not know but they are the it's not going very nice but that doesn't mean that doesn't mean that Chase and uh, maybe City, Center Chartered and all everything is going fine Goldman is still in a much better position than than any other banks as far as the interbank desk is concerned that I'm sure of anyways today we're going to talk about something which the world do not want to talk it about we generally see venture capitalist industry from one angle which is the soft bank in Sequoia we feel that venture capitalist is all about SoftBank in Sequoia. In fact, today there is a news that came, although we're going to have a separate video on that news because we need to verify this news from the from our VC, from our VC desk will verify this. But we're going to have a separate video about this and that is basically, uh, I would say, which is that the Morgan Stanley is going to be holding a secretive meeting. I don't know what's so secretive about that meeting and uh, wherein they are going to be letting uh, the companies those who wanted to have IPO in the US rather than uh, going for an IPO route they should go for a direct listing route I know that many people do not many people who are watching this video they do not know whether what, what direct what is an exact legal difference between the direct listing and the IPO there is a hell lot of difference between direct listing and IPO one thing for sure that because of the failure of the Uber, it is Lyft, now the Smile Direct, and now Peloton. The top three eye bankers of the globe, which is Goldman, Chase, and Morgan, they are thinking the alternate way to get their fees in the investment banking, that I'm sure. Well, the statement came from the Morgan Stanley, so I'm not sure whether Chase and Goldman is in agreement of the fact, but once we do the due diligence in a day or so, we'll have a video, we'll let you know about that. But on the contrary, when we look this information, we always look that VC is all, all about SoftBank and Sequoia, or maybe the few private equity players, those who invest heavily in these VCs, in uh, startups, irrespective of knowing they are in the losses. Well, there is another person who is losing and that too heavily that too heavily now you know you would be surprised to know that uh, in the last 100 days uber lost 30 percent in the value 30 percent three zero well aventor also lost almost the similar value in the last 60 plus trading days and that's i'm not saying that is the data which is saying if you look at the report from, from the Goldman, we can know that Goldman is having considerable investments in these startup. So basically, they are out of their total folio, only four companies, which includes the Uber, is in mess, Aventor, is in mess, Tradeweb. Don't forget Tradeweb, right? It's a sort of wrong. Tradeweb, it's an OMS, which is auto management system. Mess, I would call this imploded, you know, in my way. Headhunter, it's relatively good gains, if not exceptional gains. So it's it's a win-win situation for Goldman, right? So if you look carefully that these four companies in the Goldman portfolio account roughly half of its investment, which is total $2.6 billion. Not million, $2.6 billion. And if you look carefully that Goldman is losing almost on all except Headhunter. Now, we can take this video, we can take this and we can ignore that. But then let me have an alternate look. Whenever we go for IPO, and in case of IPO, either it is Goldman, Chase or Morgan, IPO is subject to the underwriting. And especially in case of these tech companies, those who are in the losses. Well, I do not know, there is one good thing we have in India, which is Bombay Stock Exchange in India's uh, platform, which is that 
you cannot list any company unless you are in profit for the last three years. Well, Ola gave a statement in the public domain, the Bhavesh Agrawal, that he is going to make Ola profitable in the two years. How? I don't know. Only Einstein, Edison and Newton together they have to sit and they know, but I don't know. And with this, he would be listing on a Bombay Stock Exchange startup platform and could be he would be doing the standalone listing on BSC, NSE. I don't know. He will take up a call. After all, it's a VC money. Why to worry? Now, if you look this carefully, we get to know that because of this underwriting, there are two kinds of underwriting. What is hard underwriting and what is soft underwriting? Now, hard underwriting means you need to give in writing that if people do not buy, I buy at, a, at that price. That's a different thing that hard underwriting, I bankers get a very, uh, on paper they get a discount, but the reality is that they get, they get hefty discounts. That is a fact. On the contrary, in the soft underwriting, they tell, we do these, these, these things. If things would turn up, okay. If these things do not turn up, then I'm sorry, I cannot, I cannot help you out. That's how it works. Sitting today, the disclosures which the investor backers actually give, it's very difficult. I'm not saying it's impossible, but it is very difficult to scrutinize that. Scrutinize one division of these investment bankers, which is lending and investment division. I don't know how many of us even know, like we look at the annual report of the Goldman, JP, Morgan Stanley, Standard Chartered, DPS and all, and how many will care for, including myself, how many will care for look at their investment banking. And because these top three or four investment bankers take underwriting positions in these startups, and well, I forgot to tell you that in case of the hard underwriting, we have a safety net also. And the definition of the safety net is just like a visa, which varies from country to country. So if you apply for multiple countries, <coughs> multiple countries will have multiple visa requirements and multiple way of the photo which they are pasting on the form. Now the question is, can I have one, one forum or one report or one place or one platform who can let me know that the top five investment bankers of the globe and especially their lending investment and lending uh, unit, how much they are exposed to the companies like Uber and all. Slowly, slowly this information is coming in the public domain like when Uber listed, Everyone thought, everyone said that the private valuation of Uber is 100 billion. It listed at 75. Immediately after the listing, it reduced to 75. And today it is less than 49, which means 50% drawdown. I did never thought that Goldman would have a personal interest in Uber. I always used to believe that it's a, it's a, it's a public money which got invested. It's not the Goldman's own money, but it is the Goldman own money which is also invested in that. And you won't be believed that Goldman has lost around $200 million in this quarter only because of the losses in these companies. Well, $200 million is not a small amount. I hope people can agree to that. $200 million you lost only because of the mark-to-market valuation and more mark-to-market valuation yet to come. That's for sure. So we need to now look venture capitalists from a very holistic approach. And as I'm delving more into the VC or our VC desk is getting pretty active, we are getting a lot, lot of link ups like Uber, which listed 100 billion, these to 75, now less than 49. Now Uber have, now Goldman having a personal interest in Uber. Can I say that Chase having a personal interest in Uber? Morgan having a personal interest in Uber? I don't know because I do not have the data. And neither the uh, the, the so-called uh, annual report or the 10K which they publishing give us the appropriate way of the data. We do not know. And more importantly, the platforms, which is venture intelligence and all, it is next to impossible to get such kind of information. So, we need to end up this video with a very harsh question. And I know many people do not like this question, but it doesn't matter. Now, the harsh question is, because the big boys are holding personal interest in these startups, they call this as a tech startup, which would never be profitable anyways. As big boys holding their personal interest in these startup, are they fooling investor or they are forcing investor to invest their money in these startup because their own personal interest is engaged in that? An additional question to this question is, is the regulator like Monetary Authority of Singapore, Federal Reserve, ECB, Bank of England, Reserve Bank for Australia and all respective regulator of that country like in case of Uber, it is Federal Reserve. Is it Federal Reserve role ends when their 
when we would have a whistle blower come out of the Uber and he will say that everything is messed up now, then Federal Reserve would wake up and take up a position, take up a call. I don't know. But one thing I know that slowly, slowly the dots are getting connected in the VC industry. And I would like to summarize this video, which is that are I bankers out of woods now? I don't know. Because one important thing I know is that the BCNs, the broker crossing networks, and I don't know whether this the CFA, the Chartered Financial Analyst, Oblique Certified Financial Analyst, and FRM, Faltu Risk Management, such kind of degrees will teach you these things or not. But one important thing I know that these banks heavily reliant on the investment banking and the way they are doing investment banking is something which is not possible probably five to ten years down the line. In fact, I think five years is more. I think it's three years down the line. So the investment banking structure is surely be changing three to four years down the line, considering that like today Morgan said, rather than going for an IPO initial public offering, you should go for a direct listing. Now I don't know because I need to read it completely. I need to see the I need to I need to see the precedents. Like can I have few precedents of the direct listing in the U.S. and what about these precedents? Whether these precedents end up making profit for the investors or end up making loss? I don't know because I do not have that information. But one thing I know is that we cannot trust these investment bankers anymore because it is Uber. It is. Lift, Smile Direct, Peloton, the list is pretty long. With this, we thank you very much. We do hold a WhatsApp group on the Venture Capitalist and we do provide a lot of trainings. We have our escalator is on the way, not very far. Multiple developments are on the cards actually. If you think that uh, you are a person who wanted to challenge the Venture Capitalist industry, you wanted to do something different, you wanted to be a force in the venture capitalist industry, you're most welcome. Well, you know my mobile number, which is plus nine one, and Indian code nine eight double nine two four two nine seven eight. You know our fixed income platform, www dot fixed income dot global. And the good news now, the fixed income platform is over one hundred seventy six countries worldwide. One seven six. So not far to reach to the entire globe. Have a great time.